Is adding salt to your food bad for you? Seems like that should be a simple question to answer, right? But actually, <laughs> with all the conflicting information, I can understand how someone would be so confused about the answer to that question because we hear from mainstream medicine that, that salt is bad and the headlines are always that added salt is bad for you. We all should be on a low salt diet. There are official recommendations for low salt diets, but the evidence doesn't always add up. And in fact, it really doesn't add up when it comes to salt, especially for the average person, the general population. Now a new study published in the European Heart Journal claims that adding salt leads to excess mortality. Once again, a little confusing. Well, actually, if you just read the headline, it's actually really disturbing if you, if you enjoy salt. But when you look into it, you realize, okay, maybe not. Let's get into the details. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and the study is called Adding Salt to Foods and Hazard of Premature Mortality, published in the European Heart Journal in July of 2022. And now we have an entire guide at dietdoctor.com on salt. The bottom line is most people do not have to try to adhere to the 2,300 milligrams of sodium that the American Heart Association recommends, or even more, they recommend 1,500 for most adults. The evidence just doesn't support it. And one of my key points, when you go back to like the DASH diet, it's actually not so much the low sodium that helped. It was the higher potassium that really seemed to benefit. Or conversely, diets that were low in potassium, that's where you saw the biggest impact of excess salt. Well, interestingly, if you look at this new study published in the European Heart Journal, similar findings come across about potassium, about vegetable intake. So if you have a high sodium diet with low potassium, that's usually going to be sort of processed, ultra processed foods, junk foods, so to speak. And if you have higher potassium, that's going to be more natural foods and vegetables. That's where there's really absolutely no indication that higher salt intake is harmful for you. So, okay, let's get into the details. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But the point being, the study headlines are that higher salt intake leads to excess mortality. And that's true. If you look just at the conclusions, looking at the abstract here, it says the multivariable hazard ratio of all-cause premature mortality across increasing frequency of adding salt to food. So basically the, the more salt you added, the worse it was. So if you added just a little bit, it were, there was no significant difference. If you added a moderate amount, it was a 1.07. So a tiny, tiny fraction of an increased risk. And at the highest amount of salt added was 1.28 hazard ratio. So still very small hazard ratio. And you know, for a population of 100,000 people, maybe it makes a difference. For an individual, likely doesn't make, make much difference. And as we've talked about before in these observational studies, hazard ratios of that small are usually statistical kind of variations more than actual real findings. Now, there were over 500,000 participants in the UK Biobank, so it's, it's data mining of the, of the data they had from these people. But now let's get into some of the details. That was the abstract, okay? So whenever we're looking at an observational study, we always have to look at the baseline characteristics. And those who always salted their food had the lowest vegetable intake, um, the lowest fruit intake. They had the highest smoking rate, right? So if you're saying it's associated with higher risk of dying, well, so smoking. And the people who decide to smoke are likely not going to be the people who are taking the most care of themselves. So smoking, current smoking in the people in the group who always salted their food was 23%. In the other groups, it was 15, 11, and 8 going down in terms of, of um, salt use. So clearly that is a big, big red flag for me when I look at an observational study like this. Um, and regular physical activity was the opposite, 54% in those who always salted their food and 61% in those who never did, all right? So um, significant difference. But now, I told you about the outcomes, right, and how small the hazard ratios were. But what I really want to look at is a figure in this paper, termed figure two, and what they look at is under which circumstances was there a greater impact. And if you look at urinary potassium, the difference was really only significant in the people who had low urinary potassium, and only in one group was it barely significant in, in um, intermediate ur urinary potassium. Now, 
Remember what I said in the beginning about the dash trial. It wasn't so much the high sodium as it was the low potassium. And that's what we see again in this trial. It's the low potassium that seems to be the biggest effect. And then you can correlate that to vegetable intake. Unfortunately, they combine fruits and vegetables. I'd like to see fruits and vegetables separate because my personal belief is vegetables are far more important than fruits in, in, in terms of um, these health benefits. But again, it, for here, it was the, the people who had the lowest intake of fruits and vegetables, the lowest urinary potassium that had the impact of, of salting their foods, and they had the baseline characteristics of smoking more and exercising less. So did I just confuse things or did I help things? Well, if you look at the headlines and you want to believe the headlines that salting food leads to increased mortality, that seems pretty simple, but it is simply wrong for most people. If you are eating a healthy diet, if you are you know, taking care of yourself and prioritizing your health and you're adding salt to your food while you're still eating your vegetables, while you're eating minimally processed food, there's really no evidence that adding salt in that scenario is harmful. So you know, taking a headline on a data mining, you know, big population study, and then trying to whittle it down to the individual, to who you are, to your lifestyle, does this impact you? That's what I try to do with these videos to try and help clarify things rather than confusing. So hopefully that was helpful. I'm gonna go have uh, some steak and broccoli and cauliflower and green beans, and I'm gonna put a good amount of salt on all of it. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.